I love my New York Central Hudson steam locomotive, but there's just one problem. It doesn't work in the tight turns of my small layout. I could build a second layout, but I still gotta fit a couch and a coffee table in the small apartment. There's no way I could build a second layout for it. Unless... Hello everyone, and welcome back to Level Up Railways. I'm Michael, and today I want to talk about how I built my own coffee table for a new passenger layout. Let's get started. got the idea to do a coffee table layout, I thought I would just buy a coffee table and go from there. However, I was not impressed with the options available, so I decided to pick up some wood from Lowe's, visit Uncle Joe to borrow his tools, and build my own table. The frame is made from 2x2 Douglas fir softwood and assembled using a combination of wood glue and these brackets I bought off Amazon. I then used these Minwax products to make the finish. I had no problem following the instructions in the back of the can to get these wonderful results. Finally, I added some rubber bumpers on the corners to hold up the glass top. Speaking of which, I was able to order the glass top online from Glass Tops Direct. And yes, it's quite the behemoth weighing in at almost 60 pounds. I could tell because the delivery driver made quite the groan when he hauled it upstairs. Now to figure out what I want to build in the table. As with the first layout, I started by designing in any rail. I wanted to add some more features to this layout, such as a two-track mainline and some slopes. I decided not to include any buildings in the design, so I can use all the space I wanted for the tracks. This layout also includes a kind of service line that can be used to bypass the slopes or lead to a turntable. I finished the design by marking out sections. I plan on wiring the layout to support block sections so I can experiment with them later. The only problem with the design is that I wanted to stick with 2% grade slopes and ended up with grades closer to 3%. It's probably not a big problem, but it might be worth testing later. A nice feature of NREL is that not only will it generate a 3D view of your design, but you can also export this view as a 3D model. I imported the model into SolidWorks and modeled out the table I built so I could see how it all fits together. I then designed a custom truss bridge for the layout and added it to the assembly file. By the way, I uploaded the STL files for the bridge on Thingiverse. See the link in the description if you want to build it too. Anyway, now that I'm satisfied with how it all looks, I could move on to the build. the 3D printer and printed out the truss bridge. It took about a whole day to print out all the pieces. Next I cleaned up the parts with the razor and some 400 grit sandpaper before assembling with super glue. To add some color I set up my state-of-the-art spray booth and spray painted the bridge. Even though I printed it gray, I still sprayed on a gray base coat. I think it helps smooth out the surface and make a nice base for the next layer. I 
And in this case, that next layer is blue. I also started with a gray base coat on the concrete piers before applying a thin layer of satin ivory. Now I use pastels to add some weathering. It's easier to do than it seems. Just think about what you would naturally see build up on certain parts of the structure. Rest around the joints, powder on some rust color, soot and oil, add black. Want to make the whole thing look dirty? Dust some brown all over. Same process for the piers except I decided to darken all of it with a dark gray pastel. Finally, I applied a clear coat to lock it all in. Now the clear coat left behind some shiny gray spots in the bridge, possibly from overdoing it, but I think it complements it well, so I didn't fix it. Again, if you also want to build the bridge, you can get the STL files from Thingiverse through the link below. Back to the table. I started by removing the glass top. Oh, be careful not to scratch it. I then position the plywood boards that will be the base of the layout. This would have been one piece if I didn't have to cut it in half to fit in my Ford Focus. When I was satisfied with their positioning, I clamped down one board and moved the other away. I drilled in pilot holes before screwing in wood screws across the perimeter. The screws are placed about one inch from the edge and about four inches between each other. Now the second board comes back into picture. One thing I needed to focus on was getting the edges to match up as well as possible, but I didn't want to throw in a support beam underneath it since it would likely interfere with switch machines I might want to throw in later. So I took a chance and instead tried to strengthen the seam with some wood glue. I then follow the same process to clamp and screw down the second board. To help the edges stay aligned, I stacked some old college textbooks to weigh the boards down in the middle. Might as well throw Hyrule Historia on top to be safe. After letting the wood glue dry, I removed the books and looked at the result. I tested the seam by applying weight unevenly and checked that the two boards moved together. If they moved independently, it could cause a crack to form in the landscape, but it seemed like my strategy worked. I followed up by sanding down the seam to make it as smooth as possible. Next I drew in center lines for the layout. I started by marking the center point of all the curves that had a constant radius. The extra lines are construction lines to help me find the start and end of straight sections which I drew in next. Then I tied a loop of Kevlar thread around my pencil, stretched it up to the length of the radius, then pinned down the thread at the center point. This allows me to draw the curves more accurately than doing it by hand. I 
However, I did freehand the turnouts and the less consistent parts of the layout. Finally, I drew out the circle I would need to cut out for the turntable using a compass. I double checked what I had drawn and made sure the bridge would fit as expected. Once I was satisfied, I outlined the center lines with Sharpie. This will make them pop out from any construction lines or mistakes to help avoid any confusion later when I start laying down track. Time to pop open the hole for the turntable. To avoid annoying the downstairs neighbors, I moved the table outside. I started by drilling out a hole near the edge of the circle so I could fit the blade of a jigsaw. This was my first time using a jigsaw, so I didn't do a great job of tracing the line. But you gotta start somewhere, and I felt like I was improving halfway through. Now let's check the fit. Yep, that's terrible. I have an idea to fix it, but that will have to wait for next time where I'll start making the landscape. Well, that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and leave a comment. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing to Level Up Railways. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can be notified on new videos where I will see you in the next level. Goodbye.